There was a knock on the door and in walked a social worker with this two month old baby boy with bright green eyes. His eyes were so wide as if he had seen a ghost. The social worker had us sign a few documents and she was out the door. He did not have any emotion while my wife held him and he just stared. I couldn't imagine how he must have been feeling. His whole life just drastically changed and he was way too young to comprehend the situation. The only thing I knew was he was scared and his mom could not be there for him. It took him a couple of weeks, but eventually this baby who had no emotion started to smile. He started to kick his legs. He started to look at us as if he knew he was safe. His mom was not healthy and was not engaging with a social worker, so visits never happened for this little green-eyed boy. And a dad had not been identified. The bonding my family and I grew with our green-eyed boy did not take long. He instantly became our baby, and there was not a speck of difference between the love we had for him and our biological kids. We got to watch him learn how to crawl, take his first steps, eat his first real food, go on his first Disneyland trip, and say his first word. His first word was my son's name, and my son still likes to remind us of that. I quickly like to remind him that the only reason he said his name first is because we are always saying his name when he's not behaving. Close to our green-eyed boy's first birthday, we got a call from the social worker saying that his father had been identified and he would be starting visits with him. I brought our green-eyed boy to the office and saw a man sitting in the waiting room. I introduced him to his son for the first time and he just stared at him while he was sitting in his car seat as if he was in shock. Our green-eyed boy gave him the same emotionless look that he had given us when we first met him. I hated leaving him with a stranger, but the social worker hurried me out of the office and said to come back in, an, in two hours. To our surprise, his dad showed up to every visit. Two times a week, our green-eyed boy and his dad would sit in the DCYF office together, reading books, playing together, and trying to make up for time that they had lost. After a few weeks, our green-eyed boy's dad decided he was going to do whatever it took to be a parent to his son. We realized that to support our green-eyed boy, we needed to support his dad, and that meant getting to know him. One day, I was picking him up from a visit and I blurted out, we go to church in Bellingham on Sundays. You're welcome to come with us and hang out with him after church for a little while if you'd like. The next Sunday, he was there with his family, making sure to get any time with his son that he could. As we were saying goodbye after church, I heard myself say, I'm going to start the grill if you want you and your family can join us at our place for lunch. My wife was mortified. The car ride home was a little rough, but it didn't take long to start the grill and get to talking. At the end of our time together, I clearly remember telling my wife, I'm going to make this guy my best friend. I wanted him to be my best friend because I knew he was going to do everything he could to be a parent to his son. And I wanted to make sure we got to be a part of that too. His dad continued to show up to every other opportunity he got to see his son. We were able to watch him play and care for his son, and his son grew to love him and wanted to be with him. We started talking during the week and going out to lunch. We started texting each other and even started going on double date nights without the kids. I also started going to court with him as he fought to get his son back. Even though it was hard on my family and I, I knew it was the right thing to do. Being able to watch him interact as a father and seeing the connection he built with his son truly opened my eyes to see that our green-eyed boy really needed his dad and his dad really needed him. On his last court day, I spoke to the judge about what an amazing father he was and how good of a friend he had become to me. The judge signed off on our green-eyed boy returning home. I cried, which is no surprise. And when I looked over at his dad, this tough guy had tears running down his face too. I told him, I'm so happy for you. It is just going to be hard for us because we love him so much. Two years later, I can sit here and tell you that our green-eyed boy is doing fantastic. And his dad is my best friend. Over the years, he has installed kitchen appliances for us, fixed our cars, and we were even able to go on a Disneyland family vacation altogether. His wife cut my hair yesterday so I can look good for this event. Our green-eyed boy is still our green-eyed boy. We just had to realize that love does not set limits on the number of people that it attaches to. He now has two families who love him and want what's best for him, but he wouldn't have had that if his dad wasn't given the gift of spending time with his son. I've gotten to see firsthand the joy and life that comes with restored families. All of the research says that children do best in their families of origin. But if we are going to take that goal seriously, it means we need to take visitation seriously. We need to care for the bonds between kids and their parents so that they are strong when it is safe for them to be together. We need to see visitation as a time to encourage biological parents to do the hard work of mending what is broken and healing what is unhealthy. Visitation is a part of foster care that doesn't get much press. 
but it is the biggest way we get to support a child's relationship with their first caregivers. I get to oversee the best team of visit supervisors in this state. I'm not just saying that they are the best because they are part of my team. I'm saying that they're the best because they are. They are compassionate, they are committed, and creative, which has made them all stars in the face of a pandemic. When COVID arrived in our state, one of our visit supervisors immediately downloaded Zoom and was helping bio parents get connected before anyone had time to panic. The department later asked us to train other agencies across the state on how to quickly and effectively start on managing virtual visits. Our quick movement wasn't because we're tech wizards, but because we knew that in the face of chaos, keeping kids from their people wasn't an option. We were intentional about having a plan on how to do in-person visits safely. So while we waited for the green light, we stocked up on cleaning and sanitation supplies. We brought thermometers. We started talking about where we can facilitate these visits. And thanks to Skookum supporters, we had an abundance of masks provided to us. When the governor's stay home, stay safe order ended, it was a Skookum visit specialist named Rachel who supervised the first in-person visit in the state to make sure a two and a half year old girl got to say goodbye to her mom. This small girl had been doing video visits with her mother from a treatment center for a few months. If there's a toddler in your home, you might have an idea of how hard that was. Her mother was just out of treatment and needed to leave the state in order to get herself healthy. Without hesitation, our visit specialist said she could make it happen. She set up a safe outdoor visit for them in a park in town where they got to actually play together for the first time in months. And that child got to spend the day in the physical presence of her mother, laughing and playing in the sand. We did this because we know what's best for a child is to be with their parents, and that time spent together is what makes healthy families. We hope that whenever possible, the kids in Skookum Care end up like our green-eyed boy, at home, safe with the parents who were given the opportunity to love and care for their child well.